So I'm gonna talk about some details pertaining to diet that I think are important to know. And the first one is metals. Amyloid plaque contains copper, iron, and zinc. And by the way, you need some copper, iron, and zinc in your diet, but you probably have heard that too much of a good thing is actually a bad thing, and that's what we're talking about here. Um, metals, too much metals, increases for the production of free radicals, which I mentioned early on, cause oxidation and damage to the brain. In the study of 64 women, those who had the fewest mental challenges had the lowest levels of copper in their blood. Um, and we see lots of studies like this. A study of 1,451 people, those with lower copper and iron levels, had more mental clarity, fewer problems with short and long-term memory. Small amounts of copper are needed, and the liver will just kind of clear whatever you need. But one example of, in the extreme, is Wilson's disease, which is a genetic condition in which the liver doesn't eliminate copper properly, and it damages the central nervous system and causes degradation in memory at a really, really young age. So it just goes to the importance of not taking in uh, too much copper. Um, the Chicago Health and Aging Project involved over 9,000 participants and showed that those with high copper diets who also consumed a lot of saturated fat and junk and fat and junk food showed loss of memory equivalent to 19 years of aging. Um, and those who were having the most problems were taking in like three times the level of copper per day. And so this goes to another point. Um, I don't think that you should practice any bad habits, but with each increasing number of bad habits, you get a dose-dependent response in your, on your journey to Alzheimer's disease. So it's not good to eat a high-fat diet, but you eat a high-fat diet that contains too much metals, and you're sedentary, and you watch TV, and you don't learn anything new, and you become overweight, and your glucose levels are high. This is what I'm talking about, about the entire body reaching some point of overwhelm, and probably Alzheimer's disease isn't the only problem you're going to have at this point in time. A study in the Netherlands, people slowest on cognitive tests had the highest iron levels. And this is, again, an issue where you need iron, you definitely do for function, but too much is not a good thing. And in fact, studies show that if your iron levels are too low or too high, you end up with cognitive problems and other problems too. Uh, the cognitive decline is not the only one. Now, it warrants a little bit of discussion about the food sources of iron. Um, plant foods contain a form of iron called non-heme iron, and the advantage of getting your iron from plant foods is that the body controls um, the level of non-heme iron that's absorbed based on levels. So, uh, for example, if you're a little low in iron, your body will absorb more heme iron. If your iron levels are fine, then you don't absorb as much. Animal foods contain heme iron, and the body will absorb lots of that heme iron without any consideration of current levels. So um, animals get their iron from eating plants, and it's better if humans would get their iron from plants as well. So your body will regulate itself in terms of iron levels when you eat the, get the iron from the best sources. Now, I want to talk a little bit about aluminum uh, because it's probably one of the most controllable um, metals in terms of ability to negate its impact. So there's no nutritional need for it. Large doses are harmful. The role of in cognitive decline is uncertain. Some studies show a very clear correlation, and some observational studies, which are very limited, I'll admit that, uh, do show that in areas of the world where there's more aluminum in the water, the incidence of cognitive decline and Alzheimer's appears to be a little bit higher. Um, but having said that, I'll show you how easy it is to not take in too much aluminum. So first of all, the FDA recognizes aluminum as something called generally regarded as safe, which is a nice way of saying we never studied it, but we grandfathered in a bunch of stuff when we started looking at uh, regulating uh, food additives and that sort of thing, so it's never really been tested for safety. So where are you going to find it? Well, it's, it appears in a lot of dairy products. It's an emulsion, an emulsion agent used in... Um, or emulsifying agent used in cheese, baking powder, refined salt, creamers, foil, cooking, uh, cookware, soda cans, and acids are a big source, and vaccines. So these are fairly avoidable. And um, metals, other sources of metals, uh, copper pipes, cast iron pans, multivitamins and fortified foods are a big issue. So let me explain what I mean by that. Men's one-a-day multivitamin contains two times the RDA for copper and exceeds the RDA for zinc. And one serving of total cereal has the 100% of the RDA for zinc and iron. 
So the problem with taking vitamins and eating a lot of fortified foods is somebody picks up a package of cereal and says, oh, this has 100% of the RDA for iron. Terrific, I'll just eat this cup of cereal and I'm good to go. But what they don't understand is they take vitamin pills and they eat this cereal and they eat other fortified foods all day long and pretty soon they're taking in 400% or 500% of the RDA. So that too much of a good thing becomes an issue. So you should be very, very cautious when you're looking at supplements and fortified foods and minimize, most of the time, minimize those in your diet. Now, here's the good news. Um, to get the RDA for copper, iron, and uh, zinc, really easy to do by eating a variety of plant foods, or it, it, when I say a variety of plant foods, what I mean is that these things are in a lot of plant foods, because one thing I talk about is people not choking down foods they don't like because they think they need to. And uh, I remember a long time ago when I first started in this business, I was talking to a woman in a follow-up call, and I said, how's it going? She goes, it's all right. I said, well, what's going on? What do you mean you don't sound too happy about it? She said, I'm eating green apples, and I'm eating kale. I said, well, it doesn't sound like you like those foods. She goes, I don't. I said, well, then why are you eating them? She said, well, you know, they're good for you. I said, well, what kind of greens do you like? Eat those. I mean, it's, there's no magical food. So... When I put these foods up here on the slide, it's not because I think, oh my gosh, if you don't eat you know, whole grains and mushrooms, you, know, you don't like those foods, that's okay. Just eat plant foods and it will be almost impossible not to meet the RDA for these types of nutrients and you won't have any need to take uh, supplements and eat fortified foods. Be very cautious about that. So bottom line to avoid metals, it really points to a plant-based diet. Eat plants, avoid the fortified foods, get rid of the dairy choose safe cookware, avoid vitamins and supplements, avoid drinking tap water, choose high quality tea if you're gonna drink tea because tea sucks up metals from the soil, so can, tea that's grown in contaminated areas can be a problem. Exercise, I never miss a chance to plug exercise as much as people sometimes don't wanna do it, and donating blood can lower your iron levels as well. Now, dietary fat is a big issue. And yes, you need fat. Sometimes when I talk about fat, people will say, well, don't people need fat? They really do need fat, but it's hard to be fat deficient. In fact, the only people in my office I've ever seen who were fat deficient were people who had serious eating disorders. I don't normally tell people in the office, you know what would help you lose weight? Eat more fat. And I never tell people in the office, you know how you could lower your cholesterol, eat more fat, right? We just don't have to give out that advice very often. It's usually the other way around. So I mentioned before that the combination of copper and saturated fat are a problem, and this does increase the damage. And the biggest source of saturated fat in the, in the American diet is dairy. The second is land animals. But saturated fat, even aside from the copper issue, is bad in and of itself. People who ate 25 grams of saturated fat daily had two times the risk of developing Alzheimer's disease as people who ate half that. And the same thing was true with trans fat. But here's the problem with trans fat. Everybody knows trans fat is bad for you. So it's been taken out of a lot of foods, most foods actually, because food manufacturers know that people are reading the labels and saying, oh, it has trans fat, I don't wanna eat it. The problem is it's being replaced with tropical oils that are full of saturated fat. So we've traded one set of problems for another set of problems. It's kind of like rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. It really has not been a change for the better. Now, let me show you how easy it is to consume 25 grams of saturated fat. If you had an egg with bacon, one egg, a grilled cheese sandwich at lunch, and a small serving of meat at dinner. There you go, 25 grams. A glass of milk, a serving of salmon, or two pieces of a cheese pizza for dinner, and you've got your 25 grams of saturated fat. So people don't realize how easy it is to consume too much saturated fat. So what does the data tell us about people eating these higher fat diets? Well, a study of 6,000 women, those over 65 years of age who consumed the most saturated fat had the worst cognitive function as compared to the people who were consuming the least. A study of 1,341 adults followed for 21 years, high saturated fat at midlife, midlife, and this was defined as 21.6 grams, less than we talked about in the other study, was associated with worse, worse cognitive skills, worse memory, and increased risk of cognitive impairment. A study of um, 20 cognitively normal adults and 27 with mild cognitive impairment, they were all on the average age 67, participants with mild cognitive impairment had higher beta amyloid levels than those with normal cognitive function, and it was directly related to the saturated fat content of the diet. This is all controllable stuff. 
So this idea that Alzheimer's disease is genetically predetermined and my father had Alzheimer's disease and my grandfather had Alzheimer's disease, so this is just destined to happen to me, it's not true. We're talking about all these risk factors have nothing to do with genetics. So saturated fat is found in animal foods and animal foods increases the risk of Alzheimer's disease because animal food intake increases the risk of high blood pressure, high triglycerides, high inflammation, and high cholesterol. Um, a study at Loma Linda University with 3,000 participants, those who ate meat, including chicken and fish, two times the risk of developing dementia as those that ate a more plant-based or vegetarian-style diet. 2017 study, participants who ate a plant-based diet had a lower risk of cognitive decline over six years as compared with people who were eating the standard American diet. And the reason was the lower cholesterol and saturated fat content um, in the more plant-based diets. Um, a study of 908 elderly New Yorkers, those who ate the most calories in fat, meaning that just overeating is a risk factor in and of itself, twice as likely to develop Alzheimer's disease. And here's what's really interesting. In this and other studies, those who ate fewer bad fats in the diet had a lower risk, even if they had that dreadful E4 allele, which goes back to what I said before. You can have a terrible genetic predisposition in terms of Alzheimer's disease running in your family, and you can overcome that by eating well and taking better care of yourself. And that's a message we need to get out for people because if we don't, people walk around feeling like helpless victims of their genetic predisposition and that's really sad and kind of making you feel like a victim, right?